Hello and welcome to this program about the RNAV GNSS approach. Today we're going to be looking at the swarm of approach in the 737. RNAV departure, arrival and approach procedures are becoming much more common in the UK and all around the world because even single engine piston training aircraft these days are f often fitted with complex area navigation systems that facilitate these kind of procedures. They also have a real practical benefit because of course they don't rely on conventional radio aids as the traditional arrival approach and departure procedures did and as a result uh, there will be little need in the future to maintain and upkeep things like NDBs and VORs which I imagine will become a thing of the past and particularly in the case of the NDB I don't think that's a bad thing. RNAV procedures essentially allow one to fly a prescribed lateral and vertical trajectory without recourse to conventional radio navigation aids. The lateral trajectory of the departure, arrival or approach procedure simply uses theoretical points in space which are summoned from the FMS or GPS system database and must be very carefully cross-checked with the aerodrome charts to make sure that uh, the correct points have been, uh, have been chosen and that the lateral trajectory fits with what has been published. To perform the RNAV GNS, sorry, the RNAV GNSS approach, we need a GPS capability, and as I'm sure you know, the 737 has two GPS receivers uh, in normal circumstances. We need to have a high navigational accuracy, which we can check in the legs page of the flight management system. And we also have to very carefully cross-check the lateral and vertical trajectories of the procedure we're going to complete. And that can also be done in the legs page. And then, we're good to go. Tonight I'm flying for Virtual Ryanair and we're coming in from uh, Bari in southeastern Italy to Stansted. We're expecting runway 22 and we're going to perform the RNAV approach for demonstration and practice purposes. Before we do that though I just thought we'd look a little bit at the conventional ILS approach which is a procedure with which perhaps you are f more familiar. It uses the localizer which gives us lateral deviation in this case from the center line of the runway and glide slope which gives us vertical information and again as I'm sure you know uh, the localizer and glide slope can both be tracked automatically using the approach function on the mode control panel. The ILS has a final approach point which in this case is at 6.6 .6 DME on the ILS and this designates the point at which the final approach segment of the flight commences. The RNAV GNSS approach has an intermediary fix and is usually always published with an intermediary fix and a final approach fix. So for this approach we're hoping to be level at 2500 feet and established on the center line of the approach by top though and we will then start the descent for the approach at Sierra Sierra 22 Foxtrot down to the minimum descent altitude of 710 feet at which point if we don't have sufficient visual contact with the runway then we will have to perform the missed approach procedure just to dispel a slight simming misnomer, the approach function of the MCP isn't to be used for the RNAV GNSS approach. We only use that to establish onto the instrument landing system, the precision approach in other words. The RNAV approach will use LNAV and VNAV down to the 
minimum descent altitude. So it's very important to make sure that the lateral and vertical trajectories for the approach that we have inserted in the FMS are correct and conform to what it says on the charts. A thorough cross-checking of the lateral and vertical trajectories in the legs page then is absolutely vital before we commence the approach and hopefully in fact before we start our descent. Because there's no air traffic control online tonight and also because there's no published procedure to state otherwise I'm setting here a direct routing from the end of the standard arrival routing which in this case will be a waypoint called Abbott direct to Topvo which is our intermediary fix for the RNAV approach. We can use the legs page and the plan page of the navigation display to cross check the routing so from Abbott to Topvo and then Topvo to Sierra Sierra 22 Foxtrot which is our final approach fix for the arrival at which we should be at 2500 feet and we then descend down to runway 22 so the vertical trajectory and the lateral trajectory have all been checked in the legs page we will for this approach actually descend down to the minimum descent altitude which as you can see from the chart 710 feet and those will be the minimums that we set on the EFIS control panel it's virtual Ryanair procedure to set the raw data from the conventional navigation aids as a backup in case we find that we have to revert from precision area navigation to standard radio navigation procedures so that's what I'm doing here setting up the ILS, the India Sierra X-ray on the left and setting up the Barkway VOR for the right this is actually also necessary, the Barkway VOR for the backup for the missed approach procedure as you can see from the charts, even on the RNAV GNNS, GNSS approach we can we have to revert to standard radio navigation procedures after passing 800 feet on the missed approach another, in, another important consideration for this procedure is the monitoring of the required and actual navigation performance these figures can be monitored in the legs page on the bottom left hand side actual navigation performance is the flight management system's estimate of the accuracy of the position that it is providing us and this is achieved through the monitoring of the aggregate positions given by the various navigational sources so the IRS, the GPS receivers and the auto-tuned VOR DMEs the standard figures used are usually one nautical miles required navigational performance for the arrival and departure RNAV procedures and this goes down to 0.3 nautical miles for the approach procedure so we're going to be using that figure as our required, nauti our required navigation performance for our approach into Stansted it's virtual Ryanair procedure to keep a close eye on the actual navigational performance in the legs page to make sure it doesn't exceed the required navigation performance figure if it does so then we have to cancel our plans for precision RNAV approach and instead revert to standard radio navigation procedures of the descent preparation we check that the FMS has been set up so the descent and the descent forecast page have all been checked the speed restrictions and the descent forecast winds expected transition level Q&H and any icing forecasts are inserted into the descent forecast page in the FMS we're not expecting any icing conditions so the anti-icing we're uh, 
don't think will be required during the descent or the approach phase. We've also checked the legs page, we've confirmed the routing, both the vertical and lateral trajectories of the arrival and approach procedures. We've also set the bugs, so we've inserted the correct landing weight and VREF as calculated by Topcat or any other facility that you have available to you and that's been correctly inserted into the FMS and is, and is presented correctly on the primary flight display we've also set the decision altitude of 710 feet and preset the Q&H at Stansted on the PFD as well as setting it on the standby altimeter. We're going to be using auto brake 2 for the landing which is set. We've cross checked the safety altitudes uh, we're expecting uh, no more than 2100 feet for the safety altitude worst case to the southwest within 25 nautical miles on our approach into Stansted and it's no more than 2500 feet within 50 nautical miles with no particular terrain notes to be aware of. The landing altitude has been set on the pressurisation panel and looking at the fuel figure on the progress page we can see we're expecting 2.8 tonnes by the time we get to Stansted. We have a reserve of 1 tonne which leaves us 1.8 to play with and it's going to take us according to the flight plan about 800 kilos to divert to our top alternate which is Luton the weather we've checked there it's very similar to Stansted and well within limits so we should be able to divert there should we need to so all in all we have about a tonne extra fuel which gives us about half an hour's holding at Stansted if required before subsequently diverting to Luton so now I think we're in a good position to start running the descent checklist. Anti-ice is not required and off. Air conditioning pressurisation set. Approach briefing fuel discussed. The VOF, QNH and MDA bugs are all set. That's the descent checklist complete. As we get closer to Stansted we're cleared to 6,000 feet we set on the MCP and we'll set then the local Q&H as well. And we also want to check the actual navigation performance against the required navigation performance and as you can see we've got an actual of 0 0.06 nautical miles and required well for the approach we're going to require 0.3 which we'll set in the legs page in a moment. So uh, we've got a very high level of navigational accuracy so no reason to abandon the RMAV plans at this stage. We can then run the approach checklist once we've set the altimeters and checked to make sure that the approach aids are set correctly. So we have a Barkway on the right for the missed approach procedure as a backup and the ILS India Sierra X-ray on the left uh, as a backup as well. And as you can see the India Sierra X-ray is selected on the primary flight display. So the approach check is then altimeter and instruments 1017 set and cross checked. Approach aids have been checked and set and the standby ADI is set. So we're now inbound to top though, we're descending to 2500 feet and we're going to intercept the final, uh, final approach track using LNAV and VNAV path mode. Two miles before our final descent point we're going to confirm that the NDA is set on the MCP so that the airplane can descend down to the NDA on the VNAV trajectory. We'll verify that VNAV path is enunciated on the FMA verify the speed intervention. We're in speed intervention mode so as to select our own 
target airspeed for the approach and that's what you're going to have to do for uh, RNAV procedures or any procedure that uses VNAV for the vertical trajectory of the approach and we're also going to confirm the actual navigation performance status so just before two miles from Sierra Sierra to two Foxtrot our final descent point we're going to check we have the MDA set on the MCP which you can see I'm just doing now we have VNAV path enunciated that we're in speed intervention mode and we have the correct speed set and you can see we're already flying the correct approach speed uh, we're around 155 knots and also making sure that we have the required and actual navigation performance status that we need you can see that the descent point is 6.6 .6 miles from the runway and it's standard procedure in the 737 for the virtual Ryanair 737 procedures anyway at 6 nautical miles from the airfield to make sure the gear is selected down we have flap 15 selected and that the landing checklist is complete so coming up to 6 miles now we can see that we have the landing gear down we actually have flap 30 set at this stage and we can now perform the landing start switch is a continuous recall checked speed brake armed green light auto brake 2 set flaps 30 green light and the landing lights are on that's the landing check is complete once the aircraft is 300 feet below the missed approach altitude which in this case is 3000 feet the missed approach altitude can then be set on the MCP at the minimum descent altitude we will then as long as we have sufficient visual contact with the runway which of course we have as you can see we will disengage the autopilot and auto throttle intercept the landing profile if necessary which we're already on pretty much and land Minimums. auto land is currently not permitted using RNAV approaches Another good thing to do, which I forgot to demonstrate in the video, is to cross-check the aircraft's current altitude with the required altitude from the published approach trajectory. On the approach chart you can see at 4 miles we should have been at 1670 feet, and if you look back at the video I think we were very close to that. And that's just to make sure, particularly when we're in IMC, so instru instrument meteorological conditions, that we are on the correct approach trajectory so at four miles you should cross check your actual altitude with the one published in the chart and by all means check this every mile if you can to make sure that the aircraft is on the correct approach trajectory and that's it folks I hope that was a useful insight into the RNAV approach. If you have any questions or comments, do uh, feel free to put them in the comments section below. Thank you very much indeed for watching.